Street. Here. We're going to begin here with the outbreak of a mystery virus in China. How on this day, how worried are you? Is this people's worst fears? In Hubei province, 242 people died today. The death toll from the COVID-19 virus outbreak in China has jumped to 1,770. There are now more than 118,000 cases in 114 countries. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. Once a dragon, always a dragon. This is the motto of Shanghai Community International School, where I am the tech integration coordinator for grades 6 through 12. There are over 60 nationalities represented in our school community, and we teach the PYP, MYP, and DBIB programs catering for students aged 2 to 18. And we have three campuses here in Shanghai, one in Pudong and another two here in Puxi. Now, moving on to the class, I co-teach with my colleague, Mr. Reed, a grade 9 media class. And our students are from 13 different countries. One from the USA, three from Spain, one from Taiwan, four from Sweden, seven from South Korea, two from Japan, one from Denmark, one from Hong Kong, one from China, one from Canada, one from Italy, one from Germany, and two from Malaysia. Okay, the first question I would like to address is what were the goals for the unit and all those things that come under that kind of umbrella? Well, the unit itself was for the kids to work collaboratively uh, to remix, recreate an existing music video. We provided a list for them to choose from, but they could also suggest one of their own. And as long as they were able to uh, practice all the different cinematography shot types, different film elements, all those sorts of things and we would okay and one of them was actually mise-en-scene and you can see here i've got a really bad mise-en-scene it's my office and I've, I've clearly made no effort you can see this uh, apple up here and this the uh, mess over here sorry about that but moving on so all our outcomes as well within this unit so a cu couple of things really was to use how to use the technology so technology they have in their pocket smartphones also uh handheld gimbals i suppose you could call this one um then how to transfer of course all that media onto their macbooks and then edit that in a in a in a meaningful way a way that represented the the video they were trying to remix um so apart from using the technology we also really wanted to focus in on collaboration and giving feedback Collaborative, collaboration because the students were all working in groups of four, three or four, to produce these music videos, okay? Um, they would all take turns being cinematographers, editors, acting, all, all those sorts of things. Didn't quite turn out that way because we had to do it virtually, but we'll talk about that more later. Uh, also, when we talk about that collaboration, it was we had to really hone in on how they could work effectively together and produce a meaningful product at the end. Uh, we also identified a bunch of uh, ISTE standards. So they were Empowered Learner, in fact we went for all seven. Empowered Learner 1C, Digital Citizen 2C, Knowledge Constructor, Innovative Designer, Creative Communicator, and Global Collaborator. In fact, we found that the virtual learning played a huge hand in making this way more successfully technology-wise, maybe not product-wise, but certainly technology-wise and how they would uh, collaborate and communicate online. Next questions. How did you introduce the unit and what provocations did you use with your students? So we introduced the unit by showing three videos of what the previous year's grade nine students produced. Pretty awesome. Uh, it was a really good hook for them because they could see what their predecessors did. This also linked to the two C's of deep learning, which is collaboration because the grade nines will need to work together ultimately to produce the movie. And of course, creativity as students would need to choose the scenes, props and the mise-en-scene. They would need to set all of that up. We also give the students the opportunity to choose their own groups. And then what they would do is come together in the groups and then shoot an elevator pitch trying to convince myself and Mr. Reed why they would really work well together. And in our uh, uh, opinion as well, we saw this as standard 1C Empowered Learner from ISTE. They then uploaded the elevator pitch to Flipgrid where myself and Mr. Reed would give feedback as well as the other students. 
Hi, we're Inge von Mir and Greta. We're working together because we're able to create a well-done and creative video. We should work together because we have good teamwork. We're working as a group to make a music video we mix together because we are intimate friends that can work collaboratively. After the elevator pitch, we introduced cinematography, shot types and framing. And then we set the students a task, which was to create a video based on the shot types and framing, which we would then use to introduce cinematography to the grade eight students. Then our grade nines would upload it to Flipgrid and they would critique each other's work. So let's take a look. Uh, first things first, do, do you guys contain all techniques? The text was easy to read and the pictures were long enough so I knew which one was what. But they have forgotten to label the use of their techniques for extreme long shot. My next question is the favourite. Did you have to make any adjustments to the unit? Wow, did we ever. No matter how carefully a project is planned, something may still go wrong with it. And this was on a good day. So enter COVID-19 as we all know and we actually received notice that school wouldn't reopen during Chinese New Year. Unfortunately for my students they were 50% of their way through the collaborative project but they hadn't started shooting yet. They were just at the storyboard phase and I knew back then well at least I had a premonition that we were going to have to pivot quite seriously away from that collaboration project. In fact so in the first lesson we had to completely redesign like a textual analysis because we were going to be there to give all that extra input. So we spent a couple of days doing this one resource, over planning it in some ways, and we included like references to cinematography within the document, which you can see. We also um, put in some writing frames as well. And of course, this was all linked in Manage Back and Office 365. And for the textual analysis that we wanted our students to do, we modeled it using the video that we wanted them to analyze and then uploaded this to Microsoft Streams so they could watch that. Right, I just want to freeze it here and explain what I think is going on or yeah, according to the mise-en-scene, mise uh, what connotations, what meaning can I draw from the scene. But the pivoting did not stop there. We had to change direction again and prepare the students for an entirely new project that they would need to shoot, direct and edit themselves. And this ended up being a teen comedy. But before they would get to that stage, we also needed to model different techniques and skills we wanted them to include. And this included us shooting two different movie scenes uh, called The Shoe and The Timetable. And I borrowed some resources online to storyboard these, which we also then asked our students to shoot, edit and upload to Flipgrid, going following that, that kind of feedback process again, which worked so well for us. And this is the example that I created over in Thailand there way back then. And yeah, we put this on the Flipgrid, the students would watch it you know, kind of try to replicate what I did or make make it better than I did. Of course, they were all over the world at this point. So there were different locations and had to use different styles and had to be very resourceful because they were working more or less by themselves or with their siblings. And we followed the same format for this movie scene, which was called the timetable. We just introduced a couple of new shots like establishing shots and then extreme close ups to capture facial expression. And then, of course, after they'd uploaded the flip grid, uh, we would give them each student personalized feedback and record that. So let's take a look at that one. A scene where someone has added in their own sound effects and it really adds in a whole new layer to that. So well done. Then once we got all of that like preparation work out of the way, we asked them to plan, script and storyboard the teen comedy. And again, uploading the final movie to Flipgrid. And once everyone had uploaded, we would then give them feedback and upload that to Flipgrid. Let's take a look. Establishing shot. Um interesting i might have done it from the, the outside first of all and throughout all of this we were also providing live lessons using microsoft teams as you can see here a um, pretty handy feature about microsoft teams is that every time you record like one of these meetings it gets posted to the channel and the microsoft stream and only those members of that team can see it so that was really useful particularly for the students who were in different time zones all over the world at this point so let's take a look at one of those yeah, just put something together. Like, even if you just get a few shots, it's 30 seconds. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Like, it's stressful enough at the minute. But if you can, like, I think it's a really good way to get, like, focused on something positive and productive. And then the next question was, how did you allow your students to reflect on this transformed learning experience? Way more transformed than I had ever expected. 
So we wanted them to do the Pecha Kucha style reflection evaluation. But we did change that. So rather than just focus on learning and what they did in media, we wanted them to also reflect on the virtual learning experience, having to, you know, learn from home and remotely and what it felt like, the kind of emotions that they were going through as well, because some of them were in the various countries throughout the world and then had to make it back to China pretty quickly. So we took all of that into consideration. Fortunately, we'd already covered this in December, so I was able to re-upload uh, the recording here you see so they could watch it. And then we also provided some instructions on how to do this um, through another video recording. So let's take a look at some of that. Uh, good morning, grid nine. And today's lesson, um, you will be creating or starting to create or put together your Pachacucha. This is my storyboard. So my drawings weren't perfect. However, I did follow most of the scene steps, like the scenes that I wrote, I drew. I think that the space you work in really change how productive you are. I've been doing all my media work either on my desk or on my couch. But however, after some more weeks of virtual learning and when more time went by, I started, you know, feeling to get, let it get a little bit harder. Now this whole time, I was also co-teaching um, virtually with my colleague, Greg Reed, who's still in Italy, unfortunately. And uh, so I wanted to get some of his feedback about he how he found like uh, working with me and did he learn anything from the technologies I was bringing in. And yeah, we collaborated collaborated through it, and um, you know we would meet usually once or twice per week, talk about the lessons, and it was really good because um, the impact was um, I think we both learned a lot from each other. Okay, I learned a lot from David in terms of his perspective and his background experience in tech. And then I think he learned um, from me in terms of my experience in media. So it was really beneficial, I think, for the lessons because it really kind of broadened the um, perspectives that the students can draw and learn from. And the final question I will address in this video was, did we meet our goals? Did I meet the goals with the students? All the tech goals, all the things I talked about in previous blogs. Absolutely. Um, I think in some ways, like the virtual learning made it a lot easier because I was before I was worried about how we're going to get to use Teams in the classroom. But of course, we had to use it. There was no other choice. So that was fantastic. I think as well, like the students have upskilled themselves massively in terms of technology uh, and how to use it, how to harness it and how to accelerate their own learning. Also, uh, aside from the goals I'd set out, the working with Greg and also like a bunch of other teachers through this process, which I didn't address in this video, has been amazing. And I've watched some people who've been like in the past afraid of tech just come right out of their cells and be, you know, in their own right could be tech integrators. They're absolutely awesome. And I'm uh, really privileged to work with them. So that leads me to my final comments or thoughts on Coattail 11. It's been, it's been emotional. It's been fantastic uh, meeting all you guys virtually and it would be really cool to meet up with you guys someday in the future. So thank you Coattail, thank you Coattail11 and I'll see you soon.